this is a Ford Raptor. It's designed to go off-road. It's going to have lights and things. It comes with aux switches from the factory. This is Jeep Rubicon. It's designed to go off-road. It's going to have lights and things. It's made by the same company that made the power wagon. You can get aux switches from the factory. This is a power wagon. It's designed to go off-road. It's going to have lights and things. It doesn't come with aux switches from the factory. This seems like a big oversight from Ram. Even the new TRX with the big infotainment screen gets aux switches. I guess I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. I'm going to install the Switch Pros 9100 to control my lights and things. Let me show you how to do it. I chose the Switch Pros because it's solid state which means it won't rattle apart on the trail. It has a battery protection circuit, which means your accessories won't run the battery flat, and you can program it and turn it on and off from your phone. Everything you need to install the switches is included in the box, the power module, switch panel, a fuse tab, bug connectors, printed labels, split loom, and even zip ties. The first thing we need to do is install the switch panel. As I know what I'm going to be using my switches for, I'm going to install the stickers before I put the switch in the cab. Remove the stickers with a pick instead of folding the labels over. Remember to install blanks over the switches you're not using. Switch Pros used to provide a bracket that would allow you to mount the switches just about anywhere, like this one in my Jeep. But now they supply this flush mount bracket that isn't going to work in the RAM. My friend Scott made this bracket for me and I'm going to use this to mount the switches in the cab. The wires need to go through the firewall somewhere. If you look behind the battery, you'll see this block off plate. Go inside the truck and look up above the pedals, you'll see the back of the block off plate with these two nuts. You can use a 15mm deep socket to remove the nuts. Now that the nuts are removed, we can go under the hood and remove the block off plate. I drilled a hole through the block off plate and put in a rubber grommet to keep the dirt out. Now I can put the switch wire through the grommet and put the block off plate back in place. Remember to reinstall the nuts to secure the block off plate. Now the switches are mounted in the truck, I can plug them in. Now it's time to install the power module. This cross brace seemed like the perfect place to mount the power module. My friend Scott welded the bracket to the brace and that's where it's going to go. The power module attaches to the bracket with two nuts and bolts. I'm gonna get one nut started before I put it on the bracket and then I'll secure the second one. The nuts are secured with a 7mm wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. Now that's mounted, let's get the wiring done. Before you install this wiring harness, be sure to put the dressing over the wires. Getting the wires through the loom is quite difficult. Once the wires are dressed, they should look like this, with the blue, pink and white control wires separated and the black ground wire separated. Plug the wire connector into the power module and then wire the black lead directly to the negative terminal on the battery. The power module needs an ignition signal and a light signal. I'm going to use fuse 91 accessory power for the ignition signal and fuse 79 which is the marker lights for the light signal. Remove the fuse box lid to make it easier to get to the fuse box. Remove the fuse from the fuse box, put it into the fuse tab and then put the fuse tab into the fuse box. I ran the wires from the power module into the fuse box, installed a grommet, cut the wires to length and joined them to the fuse tabs. Now the fuse tabs are connected, I can close the fuse box back up. Now I can plug the switch panel into the power module. Once all the other wires are connected, we can connect the positive battery wire. Start off by connecting the longer end to the power module.
I installed the provided split loom and then installed the end with the fuse closest to it to the battery post. This is the moment of truth. When I turn the truck on, the switches should come on. And when I turn the lights on, the switches should dim. It works, great. I took a couple of minutes to program the Switch Pros on my phone. Let me show you some of the things you can do. You can change the backlight options to match your interior. You've got red, green, blue, white, or you can pick a custom color. You can also use the app on your phone to turn things on or switch them off. Now the Switch Bros is installed, it's time to connect something to it. I'm going to start with my ARB compressor. If you want to see how I installed that, click on the link on the screen. I'm going to connect the on-off wire for the compressor to the purple wires for Switch 7 on the Switch Bros. And now I should be able to hit the air button on my phone and the Switch Bros will turn the air compressor on. That's it, the switch process is installed and now I can connect my lights and things. There are lots of steps, but it's pretty straightforward. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe for more cool videos.